Through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. I know sometimes you feel all alone. Call me anytime when you feel all the way down. Oh, 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 oh. Trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn. It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. In the name of Allah, the compassionate. The merciful, all praise, is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May glory be to him. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family, and his followers all until the day of reckoning. But we welcome every one of you today to this new episode of Meet Your Advisor on Huda TV. And of course, today, as we always need to be having advice, I'd like to touch on the advice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of us. And I can find from whatever emails I get, calls that I receive, and with interactions with people, I find that Allah's advice is very essential for us. We'd like to touch today on the subject of taqwa, or piety, or having a shield between us and Allah's anger and punishment. So that is the meaning of taqwa. This is Allah's advice as He said, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْدَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا الله. We have advised you and those before you that you shall have piety or taqwa. Now, taqwa is like wiqaya in Arabic, which is a shield which is to put a shield between you and Allah's punishment. And تَجْعَلَ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ وِقَايَةً Now, as uh, it was asked, what is taqwa? What is piety? Well, taqwa هي الخوف من الجليل. الخوف من الجليل. Is that you shall have fear, of course with hope, from the great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْعَمَلُ بِالتَّنْزِيلِ Which is to put out into practice the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْرِضَى بِالْقَلِيلِ And to be satisfied with little in life. This is so significant. And وَالْعَمَلُ لِيَوْمِ الرَّحِيلِ And you shall be working hard towards the day of departure. That is the day when we leave this world. So that is how taqwa, and when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was asked about uh, what is taqwa, he said it is like walking in a land of uh, thorns and you'd like to put your feet right in the right position so that you may not step on a thorn or something so that you might be hurt or you may not be able to walk after some time. So that is how we should act in life. We should be very cautious and careful as to what to do and how we do it according to Allah's uh, uh, advice to us. وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ الله. And there are many verses throughout the glorious Qur'an advising us to have taqwa, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ O you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared. And also, Allah says in the glorious Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَالْتَنظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَّا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ O you who believe, fear Allah, and every soul shall work for the morrow. So, if we need to prepare ourselves for the future, and for the hereafter, we shall work here, according to the rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're very obvious. Uh, they're not contradictory to, to uh, anything that is good, anything that is legal, anything that is very, very... Um, uh, it has all the good things in, in life. That's why 
everything has been set for us and it's only our job is to follow that guidance and rule and of course I know that there are difficulties there are challenges there are things that may come in our way um, if you want to call it obstacles but you shall not stop there but rather keep on moving this is this is so significant and that's why that's the advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for us and of course how do we do it we need to know and learn the halal and haram what is lawful and what is unlawful what is right and what is wrong what our duties are and what the duties or the rights of others upon us this is why we we, we have to have the knowledge that is the basis where we need to follow that path keep on doing it until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he is so pleased and we find in our record all the good deeds that we have done in life but we shall base it on a strong foundation, a knowledge, on a strong foundation of faith. Now, how can faith be, faith be attained? First, we know that Allah made it so easy for us. Allah made it so accessible. And in fact, He made this the natural way of responding to the call of our fitrah which is the way we were created. We were created with, the, with readiness to accept Iman, to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As uh, Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, كُلُّ مَوْلُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ Every child is born with this natural tendency towards Allah, towards getting things right. That's the natural, that's the instillment of faith inside the heart. But only it's the environment that changes that, either to this road, or to that road, to this way, or that way. Either they make him a Jew, or make him a Christian, or and make him uh, of another religion, uh, Mogus or something of that sort. The point is, we always need to be on the right path. We should always seek to have the knowledge because knowledge is a strong prevention. Now, I know many people would like to worship Allah in the right path, which is a great intention. But remember, we still have to have that worship based on knowledge. And that's why in the hadith, إِنَّ عَابِدًا وَاحِدًا أَشَدُّ عَلَى الشَّيْطَانِ مِنْ سَبْعِينَ إِنَّ عَالِمًا وَاحِدًا أَشَدُّ عَلَى الشَّيْطَانِ مِنْ سَبْعِينَ عَابِدًا One person with knowledge of the religion, someone with good amount of knowledge, is more harder, more stronger against the shaytan than 70 worshippers. So it doesn't mean that we should not worship. Of course, we have to have the knowledge and we can do the worship. But we still have to have the knowledge and keep on earning and learning and expanding that knowledge until we give it and spread it to people around us. That is why it is so important. That's why we have this session every week by the grace of Allah just to learn and to get advices. That's why I need to learn as well. And I'd like every one of you, every one of the viewers, kindly, where you have the knowledge, where you have the advice, I can pass it on from you uh, uh, to our viewers. We can share in together the knowledge so that we can have a better understanding of life and we can learn more about our reality and try to apply things that we know in our deen on our daily life and our activities. That's how we can uh, apply taqwa and put taqwa into a practice. This is something very, very important for every Muslim. And I can see 
that all the questions that I get, as I said, and all the uh, correspondence I would have with my uh, kind viewers is that we always need to be on uh, the right path of taqwa and knowledge and understanding so that we can lead a good life. That's why I'm so happy to be with you. And please, uh, keep on with us uh, on, this, on this path. This is Dr. Nadir from Oman, where he wrote me last week regarding riba. As he said, we talked about riba, and he said, if I pay uh, 20% to a dealer of a car, and the bank pays the rest, and the car becomes under the name of myself and the bank. And then after the, after I, uh, the payment by me, including excess amount to the bank, the bank will transfer the car under my name. Is it allowed? Well, if this, this is like two uh, sales in one sale, which is, of course, not allowed. It should be made so clear. Now, the bank normally doesn't get in between unless the bank gets some interest. They need some, of course, what they call it, benefit. But actually, it is riba, but engulfed in something that they say, well, it is like uh, whatever we pay uh, for processing and all of that. But normally, as you said, the excess amount is because they are just uh, buying this and they just want to make sure that the, the, the car is there in their name and they can take it at any time. The point is, if you need to, to buy a car, the bank uh, could, could buy the car and you, you actually buy it from the bank without any pre-agreement whatsoever. In other words, you, has, you still have the choice, even if you, if you say, I need a car of this of these um, features and so on, this type, this model, um, this state, whether new or used and so on, and the bank shall buy it. And if they buy it, you're not in any way uh, required or obliged to, to, to buy that car. If you decide at a later point, even before, after they, they, they buy the car, you still don't want it. So that car shall not in any way, you, you're not, it's not binding upon you to buy that car. That is the, uh, the rule because what they, what they do is that they just buy it with, with some price and they sell it for, to you uh, for a higher price, which is fine, either in installments or normally it's in installments. But there should, shall not be in any way any uh, excessive amount or penalties for late payments. If they do a financing, for example, charges, which comes to about to some percentage, and if you don't pay, for example, at one point in time, they still are going to, uh, uh, you know, that, that is, they're still going to charge you for that. That is still makes it invalid. So, invalid. so it is a very, uh, very critical situation here and my advice is that don't get with with banks into deals like this just collect enough money and buy directly from dealers that would be cheaper go to um, uh, car uh, sellers even used cars dealers and so on and try to to buy the car that really uh, uh, fits you that uh, you know f fits your demands and at the same time your budget. You don't have to get involved into something that you may not be able to pay and, and then you get into into this trouble. So that is basically the answer to this question. Um, there is another question on talaq here. This is from my brother uh, Sayyid who said, uh, I have a question related to talaq. If a husband says talaq with or without intention of talaq many times on different occasions, many times on and off in five to six year time. Does this talaq occur? 
well. This is a very, very critical uh, subject. That's why I need to advise myself and yours to be very careful and to be patient and not to get into this habit of using the word talaq. I would call it even abusing talaq. So I don't want to get into that. We need to restrain ourselves from problems like this. We always need to uh, you know, stay away from it and not even to threaten our wives with, with saying, you are going to be divorced. I'm going to... This is because we don't have uh, uh, you know, temper control. If we get into trouble, say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. You know, you leave the place where you are. Try to keep yourself very much into, uh, uh, you know, uh, self-control. Uh, try to have someone intervene uh, from the relatives of, of the wife. Try to uh, uh, advise her. And of course, you have to be uh, patient. You have to be also kind with, with your wife. And the same thing for a wife. She shall not push the husband towards the end. Normally, I know that some women do it, but even some men are not having self-control. So it, it's, a, it, it's a work of both sides. They have to uh, all work towards that goal, which is to keep their life intact. They shall keep their marriage all together. And uh, there's a, a, a strong bond uh, in between the two of you. And if, if this is going to somehow be affected by wording, then uh, terrible things would happen, especially if there are children. And, and of course, uh, talaq is not, a, is not a play. Talaq or divorce is not something that you can say today and, and, and uh, at the night uh, do something different. Or even you try to hurt or to extend the hand or strike. Of course, it's not the uh, etiquette and uh, morality of a Muslim to go and, and try to uh, use uh, your hand uh, uh, in hurting your, your wife. I know that uh, the Prophet ﷺ never did it. He never, never hit anyone, uh, including, of course, wives, children, animals. No one was hurt by the Prophet ﷺ because he is the Prophet of mercy. And we shall learn from that. And if, as I say, if you are under the pressure of uh, being nervous or getting out of temperature, just leave that. And if the best thing is to say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, because the Prophet ﷺ was sitting with a man, and that man um, was, was getting so angry. And he said to his companions, I know that if this man would say a word, then everything that he has would be gone. Which is, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Shaitan gets inside our body. In fact, running through our blood. And we may not realize it. I mean, this is not the idea, whether you're saying how could uh, uh, this creature gets into our blood. But the effect is there. It really does raise a temper and that's why we get so angry and red in having different colors in our eyes and we can see the redness in our face and so on all of this is going to affect us and that's why we should stay away from that muhammad salam alaykum wa rahmatullah alaykum salam sheikh yes go ahead brother how are you alhamdulillah ya rabbil alameen how are the brothers in qatar alhamdulillah sheikh doing well Yes, Alhamdulillah. Right, so you're in Doha, right? Yes, yes, yes. Go yes. ahead. Uh, yes, uh, Sheikh, we have this uh, home loan uh, back in my country. I'm from India originally. Yes. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we have uh, we've realized our mistake and we have decided to pay off the loan. So now uh, the question that I wanted to ask was that if we pay the loan uh, altogether, we may have to pay a little less interest. But if we pay, if we just keep paying on for a long time, for the determined period, like 10 years, then we'll have to pay a little uh, more interest. So what do you suggest? Should we just keep paying for the next 10 years? Or, you know, we should just 
uh, wrap everything off right now. I mean, what would you suggest? But how did you get into this loan to begin with? Uh, we uh, just got big, we, uh, we uh, didn't have a house out there, so uh, renting, uh, we thought rather than renting, we would just get into a house, something that most of the people in uh, Bombay and India do, you know, because rents are almost, uh, rents are pretty high. So, so you got, what they do is that... With, you got into this bank with, uh, it's a it's a traditional bank with interest. Yeah, it's a RIBA-based bank. And yes, you, want, you have to pay back whatever loan you got from the bank. With, yes, with, with interest, yes. of course. Yes, and I know yes, that if yes, you yes. pay in a less time, they would make the interest less. Yes, sir. That's, that's a very simple formula. Yes, um, yes, I'll yes. tell you what, what you should do. How, how, how much uh, time you still need to, to, to pay for this? Is it almost... If, 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 we, if, we, go, if we go by the, uh, by the timeline of the bank... Then it will be, say, eight more years. But I have enough money, alhamdulillah, to pay it off for even tomorrow. So what would you suggest in this case? Okay. So you can still pay all the amount? Yeah, yes, sir. Tomorrow yes. and get rid of it? Yes, inshallah. Okay, very good. Very good. I'll, I'll give you the answer. Inshallah. 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 Okay. All right, Safiya, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Oh, we got cut off from India. But nonetheless, we still have an Indian with us uh, that asked this question from Doha. And let me tell you, regarding this particular point, it is not allowed for us to get into a deal with a bank in a RIBA engagement. Period. So that loan shall immediately be resolved, Brother Muhammad. We shall get rid of this Right away, in fact, today, now, if you can, or tomorrow, inshallah, if tomorrow is not, is not a, 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 an off day for banks in India, which, which I would assume, but you shall make the statement and make ready, ready that on Monday, for example, if that is going to be the first starting uh, day of the week, is to uh, contact the bank and say, we need to stop this. There is no point for us to continue because... The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam says, فَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُوسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ لَا تَظْلِمُونَ وَلَا تُظْلَمُونَ If you repent, then you have only your capital, and you shall not be dealt with unjustly, and you shall not be unjust, meaning only you have your own capital. So, let's get rid of this, let's resolve it immediately with the bank, pay off um, without paying interest, and you shall get withdrawal from this, and never get into back, uh, get, get back into this, and we shall repent. That is the point. I need to break here, but I'll be back with you shortly. So please, stay around. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Dear viewers, Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Be proactive. How to be uh, proactive in Islam, how to serve our religion, how to serve uh, our life. No, we want them to be proactive in matters that are related to their ummah, the true leader. And this is maybe we need to have this okay, among us as Muslims. The true leader is the one who creates leaders. So the society at the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave the chance for the children exactly. to blossom. Now who took the reward of this? The initiative of Ali bin Abi Talib. Ali bin Abi Talib took the reward because of his initiative. How long have you been passive? How much time have you lost in your life because of negativity? Learn how to take conscious control over your life. Set your goals and work to achieve them in an Islamic way. If you really love your wife, your children, your parents, your people, then you have to do your utmost. You have to do whatever you can in order to invite them to Islam. We are in need for this reminder. The main point is ikhlas, is sincerity, is what I want to get in the hereafter. 
Join Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad and his host Muhammad Abdul Rahim in this inspiring show. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. We're back with you, and as I was saying earlier. We should be very careful with dealing with, with these banks, traditional banks. Try to do this with an Islamic bank and also not every Islamic bank uh, because sometimes they just only have that title Islamic but they don't act Islamically. In other words, they shall be uh, a commission or a group of scholars who actually supervise that work constantly of the bank because sometimes they try to you know, go uh, around uh, the fatwas and, and the statements made or the rules that, that were made for them by these scholars. But they should always be on top of things and they, for each particular deal, you shall have that fatwa written in Arabic, in English, in Urdu, whatever uh, statement that was issued by trustworthy scholars. Those scholars that we have in Saudi Arabia, for example, for, for different banks. I'm not going to mention any particular bank, but there are many banks who do have their own dealings, Islamic dealings, and with fatwa for every particular deal. That way we can get out. I know that this is a tremendous, a tremendous burden upon economists, upon businesses, to make sure that what they're doing is, is they're doing it um, according to the right way. Alhamdulillah, now with the expansion of this, the Islamic banking, which has the support of many in the, in the business uh, of uh, economy. I mean, uh, in, in France and in, in the UK and the USA and so many other countries, uh, there are many good efforts in that uh, respect. And in Britain, for example, uh, at least three Islamic banks have been opening and there is uh, a, a good um, acceptance of that and people are dealing with that because people want to get uh, you know lawful deals instead of getting uh, into that so my my advice still is that you shall uh, immediately withdraw from that now going back to the issue of talaq or divorce and according to what brother Sayyid uh, already sent here you shall not uh, have this and, and uh, if, if this is with intention by the way if the word of talaq is said with the intention of having talaq then talaq would immediately take place we shall in no way in no way play with it because uh, as according to this uh, saying ثَلَاثٌ جِدُّهُنَّ جِدٌ وَهَزْلُهُنَّ جِدٌ uh, three matters that their seriousness is seriousness and their um, uh, you know, jokes are serious, or seriousness. One of them is talaq. We cannot just play or joke with talaq. Talaq is a serious matter. And uh, some people just swear by talaq, which is uh, a terrible and bad habit that is taking place even here uh, in this country and in some other countries, even in the Arabian culture. There's a very famous, I'm not sure of how spread this is among uh, different cultures of, of Muslim nations, but it's wrong, and we shall not get involved in it in any way, but we shall always m make sure that we are all right. Uh, Yusuf, bint Yusuf, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Salam, how are you, sister? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I just want to ask about my husband, about yes. the khula. Yes, hola. because uh, I have some problem. I was uh, married a uh, four years ago, and I don't have children. Mm -hmm. uh, I, uh, my husband said uh, because I am a working woman. My husband said he married because of I am working, and he is not giving me any this thing for the food, anything for me. And sometimes he need money from me also. And uh, the medically he is uh, he is. Uh, 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 suffering with impotency, deficiency, and there is no hope for the future. We have children like that. So I just want to ask, I can take decision of Kula or no. Okay. So, this is your right, by the way. 
And is he agreeing to that? If I will tell him that I need, uh, I, I will go for the step this one, then he said no problem. He has no objection about this. Okay. Okay. And you, you made tests, medical tests for both of you? Yeah, both of we did the medical test. For me, it's, alhamdulillah, it's nothing. But uh, okay. for him, there is deficiency and the okay. doctor said there is no hopeless also. Well, it's, hope, it's hopeless. He well, will not be uh, get children anymore. The, ho the hope is always there. Alhamdulillah, never, Inshallah. never despair. But nonetheless, it's your right, sister. You can agree on a certain amount of. of uh, Please, uh, can you help me for the this step? What, what I have to do? I don't know that. I really, okay. I make istikhara also. Okay. But in istikhara also, it comes to get another marry. But I'm not agree for this. Okay, I'll I'll answer that for you, Bint Yusuf. Okay? Thank you so okay, much. Okay, thank you very much. All right, sister. Well, let me uh, uh, emphasize the point. Of course, khula or divorce based on monetary compensation or some compensation of any sort, whether this is money or property or whatever, uh, if, if both the husband and the, and the wife agree because the wife wants to uh, have a divorce and the husband doesn't want to, uh, they resort to this khula. Now, uh, by, obviously, if um, it is like that, where Bint Yusuf, for example, says that she wants to um, uh, have children, have another uh, marriage, and of course the husband is, is committing wrong by not spending on her. And of course, uh, that is his own... Uh, destiny or uh, whatever Allah decided for him, he shall be patient. And uh, if if that is not the case, I know many many even big scholars uh, who have this deficiency or problem of impotency. Well, they cannot have children, and that's why, if if that is the case, they can they can always resort to that. And she should be uh, even moderate. But you have to do this, and you have to file it with a Sharia court. And if you're, as I understand. Uh, if you are in Saudi Arabia, you can always go to the um, uh, court, the Sharia court, and they, uh, they, they will give you. They'll give you the, uh, uh, of course, uh, the procedure, what to do. Normally you have to file it. You might uh, consult um, a, a Muslim uh, legal advisor. Uh, this, is, this is important, uh, uh, a lawyer. Uh, a lawyer w would do that for you, would file all the, uh, you know, the, the case and would uh, require some, some paperwork that you have to do. And then uh, both of you would, would come to the, uh, to the judge and the judge would listen to both of you, of course, with all the documentation of the marriage and so on. And then uh, you'll reach, he will reach uh, uh, the, uh, of course, uh, the rule, the, ju the judgment in this regard. So it is simple, but uh, you have to be, both of you have to be kind enough and you accept, uh, uh, you know, not, you, do, you should not uh, ask for much amount uh, for that. He shall not uh, ask for much amount for, for this, uh, but he still has the obligation to spend on you as long as you are his wife legally. And then the judge may ask him to compensate you for the amount of time that you spent together as husband and wife, and uh, still, uh, for, for some reason, he, he didn't pay you back, uh, and he, he might need to pay you back all this amount of the expenditure that he was supposed to, to spend on the family. That is, uh, that is the idea here. So, again, uh, the issue of talaq and, and, uh, and khul is very, very uh, uh, sensitive, and we need to be uh, careful what to deal with this and always try to uh, have this social life, especially between husband and wife, um, in, a, in a very, very good and warm uh, atmosphere. We shall create this harmony and uh, being always uh, on good terms with each other. Uh, as Allah says, and of course it's the responsibility of the man, as Allah says, وَعَاشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ You shall always deal with your wives with, as this is the ad address to men in particular, but of, of course it's the same with women. Women have to be obedient, have to be kind, have to be responsive, 
but may, uh, again, the leadership is in the, uh, in the hands of the man, and the man shall be kind, strong, generous, all these good qualities, and you shall deal with them with, on good terms. You shall not in any way go against uh, the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commandments of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Uh, getting into uh, another issue here, which is very, very important. Uh, this is, for example, uh, again, an issue from our sister, uh, uh, Umm Abdul Ghaffar, who says uh, that I got married six years ago, and after previous divorce, I'm uh, first... Okay, do I have a, a caller from Aflin? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Yes, sister. Um, I'd like to ask a question regarding sihir. Um, I I would like to know what are the symptoms of it, because um, I feel as if something a bit different is happening to me. Um, somehow or rather, I'm feeling very tired. Um, I feel um, erratic in terms of my emotions sometimes, although there is nothing, there shouldn't be anything leading to that. Sometimes I have uh, recurring dreams of uh, this particular person um, intending something uh, on me, and I also sometimes feel I am very forgetful, unnecessarily forgetful. And a lot of the time, uh, my husband says that, you know, this could be the symptom of severe um, and what should I do about it? Because I do feel sometimes that I'm saying something without really intentionally saying it. But, you know, it just escapes me and, and I feel very tired. I do tahajud almost every day. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I try to, 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 to continue. Um, and I think that that should be protecting me from this. But I do feel something strange is happening and, and I know Sihir is out there. And it has happened to me before, so I'd like to, to get your advice on it, Sheikh. This is, you said... Thank you. Uh, wait, 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 sister. Aflin? Yes. Aflin, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes. Yeah, now tell me, what what is the first word you said you're suffering from? Sihir. Sihir. Black, yes, sihir. Black magic or magic? Yes. Okay. But who, who gave you this diagnosis of uh, magic? Who said that? Well, well, my husband suspects it. Actually, it's it's just only a suspicion. Um, it's not something for yes, sure. Okay, okay. Well, I'll I'll answer you, yes. inshallah ta'ala. Thank thank you so thank much. Well, th this is this is very very important because what we need to 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 know regarding the sihr. Uh, or magic. Now, uh, sometimes this is referred to as black magic. There is no black magic or white magic. All magic is black. All magic is terrible and bad. And we need to uh, make sure that we don't fall into that. But the point is, are we diagnosed with it or not? This is not up to anyone. Not er everyone is... is uh, you know, sometimes we may suffer certain things or may have s certain pressure or sometimes, um, as, he, uh, as our sister said, maybe some difficulties with, with breathing, with bad dreams, with, um, you know, sometimes feeling very exhausted and tired. Um, this may not be uh, the reason. It could be something physical. So you need to uh, make sure, of course, as you uh, protect yourself with adhkar, you need to protect everyone, whether you're being healthy or complaining of anything. We need always to protect ourselves with, um, you know, praying uh, all the salahs in their own times, whether being a male or, or a female. If you're a male, you need to do the, the prayer inside the masjid with the congregation. If you're a female, then you need to do it every time within the, the allotted time. And, and, and the sooner the better, as long as you... Uh, uh, make sure that the adhan is in and, and the time is in, you shall go ahead and offer the prayer in, in um, tranquility and peace of mind and make sure that you read the Quran every day. Make sure that you do the morning uh, dhikr or remembrance of Allah and the same thing with the evening remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is going to protect you. If you read the, the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah, if you read the three uh, 
معوذات قل أعوذ برب الفلق قل أعوذ برب الناس قل هو الله أحد uh, that would be a, a protection uh, for you from shaitan and from of course being affected by whatever magic or anything but still it might it might happen but this can only be diagnosed by experts those who know very well if there is any um, you know uh, any effect due to magic or um, even uh, demons and so on and so forth uh, but sometimes people are uh, put under that you know uh, understanding because they they suffer from something and they they say well I might have it I'm not sure well as long as you are doing your own dhikr and in connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you shall be protected you shall have also strong heart strong iman inside you you know sometimes um, you might be affected or a victim even if your own thoughts if you if you feel like I'm not really doing the right thing uh, you know, you feel like, uh, I'm, I'm afraid of this, I'm afraid of that, and uh, I might have this. You know, all these terrible things, will the, the shaitan will get in and will affect you and will uh, make turn your, your life into a miserable thing, which you really don't want to. So my advice to you is you shall go to a doctor, a, a physician, make sure that you do uh, complete tests, and make sure, uh, you know, where this is coming from, and based on that, they will diagnose whatever, but keep on doing all the dhikr and protection, and you'll be safe and sound, inshallah. I have a break, and I'll be back shortly, so please, stay with us. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose whom he wills subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy for his messengership for the revelation to be revealed this is not for the human beings to make that decision if a person would turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely truthfully asking for forgiveness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to forgive we have as Muslims a duty and that is to recite the book of Allah, to ponder over the verses, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to act according to the Qur'an. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything, but it who would this mercy will be for. And the Prophet sallallahu was sent to all mankind. So the ummah or the people of the Prophet sallallahu are all mankind since the time of the Prophet sallallahu till the day of judgment. Why waste our life? without getting to know every verse in the Qur'an, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Let's talk. So this is something that you have to point out to, the, to them in the Bible. It's something which is, I think, very badly needed by the youth which is uh, staying firm on the truth this is just one of the greatest examples for me of how to control your anger within the framework of, of being the cleanest religion the cleanest jurisprudence and in the meantime uh, uh, the kindest religion to animals Watch Let's Talk with Khalil Amunet as he interviews guests and discusses a variety of topics, everything from youth issues to religious issues. Join us here on Hoda TV. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let me go back to this particular question which I wanted to answer earlier. Where, this is coming from uh, our uh, sister who said that I got married six years ago. Uh, it's my first marriage and alhamdulillah we have two boys together and I have four kids from pre a previous marriage. I'm living in Europe as my husband joined me here after we got married and we both come from Africa 
Now, after my husband has got a citizenship, he says he wants to divorce me on papers because he wants to do or to bring his brother to Europe. He has a female friend who will bring his brother. Okay, do I have a caller? Yes, Muhammad, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaykum wa salam. Yes, brother. Yeah. Wa alaykum wa salam. I just want to make a contribution. Yeah, I just want to make a contribution. Okay. But can you listen to me from yeah, the lady the uh, phone? You know, she married for 15 years. And Muhammad. Muhammad. Turn down TV yeah, and yeah, listen to yeah. me from the phone only. Okay. 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 All right, Muhammad. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. The lady that said I married for 15 years and there's no issue between her and her husband. I just want to conclude that uh, it's against Islam for you to imprison anybody. If you know you have problem, why can't you allow this woman to go and have peace, you know, between the two of you? But I allow bless uh, each and every one of you instead of imprisoning this woman and, uh, you know, having unhappiness in her life. That's my conclusion. Secondly, I want you, to you, you me are you are commenting? Muslim leaders S excuse who, me. Who claim that Muhammad, they are Muhammad, people. Muhammad. Can you speak slowly and tell me, first, you said the advice is to keep uh, that marriage for the lady who wants to have khula. Is that your advice? Yeah, what I'm saying that if the, the husband could allow the lady to please allow her to not have freedom, he said she'd look for, for divorce. Right. The husband should grant her right. Right. divorce. Right, okay. That's that's number one. Number two? Number two, I want to use this uh, program to appeal to our Muslim leaders throughout the Arab world and uh, North Africa that if two ladies are leading the people and the people don't want them, at least they should step aside. Instead of allowing the, uh, the people they claim they are leading, claim themselves only the name of that one seat. Anytime I see any Muslim die, uh, because of this, I felt sad and I cried. And the western okay. world is the last night of. All right. The earlier looking world, the better for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Muhammad. Yeah. All right. Very good. Um, your advice regarding this is, is well taken. Thank you. And I hope that uh, the husband uh, is listening to you. But still, if he wants the money because he already paid the dowry or mahar, and he wants to regain some back because that is the interest. He still wants the women to stay with him. But he, he said, in order to give you the freedom from this marriage, I need a compensation. Just like she had to ask him for dowry or money in order to get married. So now he's paying her back. So this is a matter of a legal uh, way of getting this marriage into an end. So that is his... Uh, right, in, unless he wants to go ahead and, and, and say, I'm giving you the freedom, no need for any compensation. But as I said, he has committed wrong by not spending on her, because if she's his legal wife, she has the right of expenditure. She has the right to get the money for food and clothing and housing and so on and so forth, medical um, uh, needs and so on. All of her uh, things that she needs, necessary things in life, and all of the normal expenditure that uh, she gets from a man of his status, then she's entitled to that. And then the judge, according to that, might ask him to pay back, as I said earlier. But uh, regarding the second advice, uh, I appreciate your, your idea of, um, uh, you know, when, when a ruler is in status and he is uh, not being wanted by his own people, then what he should do is accept their own uh, uh, decision or uh, all these that we can see, the demonstrations, uh, massive demonstrations in the streets. Obviously, it's a very, very sensitive situation. Well, be to begin with, as I said earlier, when I commented on this particular issue, uh, because there are many inside countries who want to change the uh, political situation in their own countries. And of course, uh, if there is no reason for that, uh, then obviously it is not allowed and they are committing something wrong because, uh, as you said, this involves killing and, and, and confrontation and so on. 
But then if uh, the idea is we need uh, Islamic rulers or rulers who control and lead their own nations with the Islamic rule, with justice, and of course with um, all the citizens participating in, in this uh, uh, political system where they have their own chance according to the Islamic Sharia. And of course, if the Sharia is being applied, obviously it would uh, give uh, everyone his own right and it would accommodate Muslims as well as non-Muslims, all the various uh, parties uh, and, and groups within any particular country. And obviously, we don't want the things that are happening to take, to take place, obviously, in any country. Uh, and it's sad, as you said, it, it is affecting all of us, and we wish that uh, none of that would happen. Uh, obviously, uh, I would, I, we would say that this is the result of injustice, or some, uh, let's say, uh, conspiracy being done by some people within any particular country, and with outside interference um, or intervention. Let me say that today I was uh, attending um, a lecture by uh, an expert, a strategic expert in defense, and who is an academic who actually dealt with that issue in particular and made uh, the point that what is taking place uh, nowadays in, in various parts of the, of the Arab world, um, especially the turbulent uh, places, is actually due to both the inside revolt, but also the um, outside intervention by great powers. And of course, it is affecting uh, those, the status in those countries. So what we need to do is make sure that we are uh, dealing with our own people, listening to the people, and responding to their needs, leading their uh, rule with justice, with understanding, with uh, giving everyone his own right. And I think if we do that, if we do like Umar ibn Khattab used to do, where he would go in the streets of Medina, asking people, or you know, making sure that people are, are doing well, that, as, that is actually uh, the, uh, uh, the important thing that we need, we need to have. Uh, of course, if, if we do that, things would be much, much better than they are nowadays. And, and then we would prevent any um, outside uh, interference into our own affairs. And we shall decide things on our own terms according to what we have and not because of the effect of things coming from um, uh, somewhere else. This is, this is the point, of course, if we have the taqwa that I started my... Uh, talk today, my, my show today, with the taqwa or piety, then obviously we will be in a much, much better position. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the guidance and the taqwa and the knowledge to know Him better, to worship Him better, and in fact to fear Him and prepare for the last day so that we can be saved in this life as well as in the hereafter. I'm sorry, Sister um, uh, Umar Abdul Ghaffar, because I will be responding to you, but I wanted to do that, but I have to, to stop here according to my, um, my director, Ahmed Atif. I have to stop here, hoping to meet you, inshallah, next week, just around the same time, 9 p.m., Mecca time. Until then, I leave you with Allah's care and protection. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I heard it through a brother that you, oh my brother, you are going through times of difficulty. I know sometimes you feel all alone. Call me anytime when you feel all the way down. Oh, 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 oh. Trials and temptations lie at every corner we turn. It's a test from Allah to see if we succeed or not. My brother, it's a trial that Ooh. you're going through. So Ooh. don't be afraid. Allah's there for you. So hold on, Allah's there for you, hold on, He's listening to you, hold on.